is keep at high volt, the high voltage, the output. But because of this noise coupling, it suddenly turned this on, I'm going to discharge this one. Yeah, even later you recover to turn this off again, the charge is gone already because this is not regenerated. Uh, for example, this can be DRAM related, similar to DRAM or instead of SRAM, but this one is regenerated. Okay, so just get a feeling and we will discuss this again later when we talk about this logic. But the mistake I make is that I put the wrong signal here. It should not be a uh, crop bar. It should be crop actually. I should put crop or just put evaluation. Okay, any question about this? Uh, if no, basically, it's a, basically noise immunity is very important, right? You do something very good for your device, but I think that is the most important metric, right? Because you are very fast, you save energy, Remember the PPAC, it is very cheap. But if you don't have noise immunity, basically it is not working, right? A very bad noise immunity in the extreme case is just that you are doing the wrong logic because a little bit fluctuation can change your result, okay? So, however, we want to know that um, we want to transfer the energy information correctly in the presence of noise, but we do not want to transfer the noise. So when you design the circuit, your goal is that your noise will not get amplified. You will keep suppressing the noise, okay? Now let's take a look on how we can do that. And that is why CMOS is so great. Now I'm showing you two graph, right? Very confusing, but let's do it step by step. This is basically talking about an inverter train. Two inverter. Okay, so this one will be V in, right? And then this will be V out. But then this will be equal to V in of the next stage, right? So this is V out, let me call it V out. Two, is this okay? And basically this is V in one, uh, V in two, where, let me call it one so that it will be easier. V in two equals to V out one. So I plot the transfer correction. If this is one, I have this curve. This is the inverter. This is the VTC, right? The VTC of number one. Is that okay? Now, so this is V in one, right? And then it gives me V out one, right? For example, V in one is V zero. And I match this curve, it gives me V one, right? Just follow this transfer characteristic. Is this okay? But then now the V1 becomes the input to the second device, right? So this is the input. So that's why I need to flip the curve. This becomes the VTC of the second curve. That is because now this is V in two. Now the V in two, the input is the Y axis. The output is the X axis. Is that okay? So if I trace it, right, start with V0. Okay, I go up. This is the input V in one. And then you tell me that the output is going to be V1, right? Then, now the V1 becomes the input to the second gate. So what should I do? I'm going to go up here, correct? But I'm not going to use this dash curve, the second curve. And then based on this second curve, it tells me that the output, this is V out two is V two. 
Is this okay with everyone? Any question? Make sense? Now then, if this is a train, it will keep propagating, right? Go to the next stage. Now this VL2 becomes the input of another stage. So this is V in two, then I trace it, I go up. I don't draw it very well. This is the third inverter, right? I can keep going, have another inverter. And its output is here, V3. So what do you see? For this uh, structure, I expect to have zero input as V in one. If it is zero, the output will be V3, right? But because of noise, this is the noise. Somehow, someone couple it to my input, it bring it to V0. Well, this is very bad. But however, because I have this curve, I will go up and then when I go to the next stage, it will go to here, then go to the next stage, go to here. Eventually, it recover what it's supposed to do. And that is called regenerative property of this inverter, right? So you can try the same thing, no matter what type of noise you come here, then you will see that eventually it will go to the in, the, the uh, out, output low, right? And it is this regenerative property that make our CMOS circuit so robust. Any questions? So, uh, could you please explain one second the regenerative thing? Explain one more time. So what I'm trying yes, to yes. say is your input supposed to start with low. For example, the calculation from before, you say the answer is zero. But because of noise, it appears as V zero to this inverter, right? Zero, uh, it becomes, let's say, 0 0.5 volt instead of zero volt. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay, so this is a situation. If it is 0 0.5 volt, then we just follow the VTC. We find that the output is not going to be, let's say one volt VDD that we want because you give 0 0.5 volt instead of zero volt. But that is fine. Although this is not VDD, but then when you go to another inverter, it's going to follow this curve and you see that the output is going to be lower, closer to zero, still not zero. And then if I go to the third inverter, you see the input is no longer V0. It actually get closer to zero. So the output is even closer, oh, even closer to VDD. And this keep going and eventually you will get back with uh, VDD, which you expect. So it keep regenerate what you want. Regen, is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, yeah. good. But here so, is this. Uh, how do you decide the number of stages uh, to you know, uh, uh, to expect the uh, output to be zero? It won't be exactly uh, zero, high. but but it's not. We are really designing how many uh, how many stages. This let's say this is a function. Although I draw it as inverter, this one can be a LAN gate, nor a gate cop, coupling to other places. They also have a VTC. So, so you may get some temporary, temporarily bad signal, but it's still correct. It's just that it's not VDD and zero, but you don't read them, right? The point is that after it propagate all through, maybe this is a adder, all the train eventually, the signal will stabilize back to either VDD or zero. And how many stage it need to go back really depends on the shape of this function. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And here we really 
show you something like this. Noise transfer function is less than one. I start with the noise, which is very large. After a few stages, the noise is gone. Okay. Now, this one is long regenerative, which is bad. If, what's the difference? You see that now this becomes one and this becomes two. The first one is actually have a shape like this instead of the shape like this. And of course, the second one will be a mirror image along this line, right? If I input zero, definitely no problem. If I input zero here, then I will get, uh, I will get what? Oh, no, no, sorry. I input high, right? This is VDD, right? Then I get zero, right? Output will be zero. If I input zero, output will be VDD. This is what it's doing, right? But the problem is what if I have a little bit noise, let's say V0. I, I want to give zero to the logic, but it, the output is V0. Then you go up, the output becomes V1. I cannot reach VDD. Okay, you not we not we did it. That's okay. But then after the next stage, it becomes the input to this curve, right? We won. Then the output is even further away from zero, right? And then I go back to the first curve. Then I get we three, and then I go again. It get closer and closer to crossing over point, the metastable point. Actually, this is not metastable. But even you have a little bit noise all the answer will be screwed up. Your logic is not working, right? Here, if I have noise, you always bring me back to zero or VDD. Is this okay? So what is the difference between regenerative and non-regenerative? Can, can you tell me, right? Let's just pay attention to the curve one, right? The solid curve. What's the difference between that? Can, can you summarize it? Anyone can summarize it? can see with a simple sentence is related to the slope. Uh, professor, is it like uh, the uh, in the first one in which in the regenerative graph, it is within the noise margin range and the signal is not going outside the noise margin value? Uh, yeah, you can say that. That's right. But how about from the uh, point of the shape of the curve? Professor, the slope for uh, regenerative is minus one, whereas the slope for non-regenerative non is reaching zero. Okay, That's good. Uh, instead of minus one, you're right, it's related to the slope. The slope, absolute value has to be larger than one. Slope is dv out, dv in. Right, you of course, I, I cannot prove it, right? But uh, I did not prove it. But you can try to draw it. You see that if the slope here I, and slope, not just slope, right? Slope, I mean, slope at middle, Let, let's say slope at Vm, that would be good, right? The slope at Vm, if the slope is very steep, you will naturally get a regenerative curve. Just try it, try to play with that. But if the uh, slope is not deep, right? This is pretty shallow, just like what you said, zero, right? This is not zero, but if it is zero, it's even worse, right? This is not one, but larger than one, but if it is infinity, it's even better, right? So when you design a logic, you want to have something that has the regenerative property and the goal is to have the slope larger than one, the absolute value larger than one. Make sense? Yes, Professor. Okay, great. Okay. Any question, just stop me, right? So there are other matrix we need to know uh, about the logic, right? We always take it for granted, but now you are at this level.